Hi, everybody, and thank you very much for attending my talk. So I am talking about passwords, um, basically in the African context. So basically, the talk is going to be broken up into two little sections. Um, I'm going to talk about how corporate South Africa uses passwords. And then I'm also going to talk about if we converted our passwords into an African language, for example, does it actually offer any additional benefits um, for passwords for the end user? So, as I say, I'm Subusiso Sishi, um, and there's all my details. And I'm from a South African based company called Iron Sky. Um, we do, I'm a penetration tester, I'm also the co owner of the company. Um, and before I got into cybersecurity and pen testing, uh, I was a professional athlete for 15 years, um, representing South Africa at various world events. So basically, in corporate South Africa, we also use English. English is the, is the, is the main language that's spoken in business because in uh, South Africa, we have many different languages, so we kind of <laughs> all revolve to English to talking about things. And what I found was that many of the password policies that were, people were using um, within the organizations were, made, were based in English. So with English password examples and also with English, um, the systems that they're using, both South Africa is mostly a Microsoft shop, so most of the systems people are using were also based in English words. User awareness in South Africa is extremely low around cyber, and also there's just the cyber risks and passwords. Um, things are very, very low. What I found was that the default Windows password policy in South Africa was sort of like the go-to when creating passwords. So um, administrator will say, yes, this is our password policy, and after that, once that is set, cheers, uh, we don't really care. As long as the passwords conform to the password policy, they never really looked at it after that. So, so basically, when I sort of wanted to, I wanted to understand what kind of passwords South Africans are using within um, the users in South Africa are using within the organization. So I took seven, seven South African-based organizations, um, some private, some, and I think two of them were governments, and I collected password hashes from them. Um, so it's extremely tough to, to actually ask to get them to agree to give me their, their NTS the, the databases that contains it. Um, and I told them that like, I'm just using it just to see what kind of passwords, and I'll share the results with them at the end of the, of the discussion. So basically, I collected 2,614 LM hashes and 170,000 NTLM hashes um, out of this. And then I get cracking on these passwords. And what I found was that in the LM hashes, most of the passwords that people were using within the organizations was ABC. ABC123 was actually the top password in South Africa um, for LM hashes. And then followed by password and fish eagle. I don't know why fish eagle, um, but hey, that was the third top password that was used um, when, it, when LM hashes. Um, in NTLM hashes in South Africa, a lot of passwords were password one. Password one followed by capital letters of all password. And then the most, another one was, another very popular one was people using their company name as a coping mechanism. Um, so basically, this is the, basically the breakdown of all the passwords that, that people are using. So you can see the ABC, Fish Eagle, ABC12345, password were heavily used in South Africa. And one thing you'll notice is that most of these passwords are all basically English passwords. There's not one that has come off, has comes off as an um, as as African word at all. Other interesting information was that users also created passwords that followed around their, their products, the company products. So if the company sold cars, they'll call it company car 123 or whatever. And <laughs> and some users also use their cities and their towns that they were in. So if I'm, if I'm a pen test and I'm coming to an organization, the first thing I normally try is I'm going to use a company name, I'm going to use the region, I'm going to use the town to, to try to guess user's password. And chances are I'm going to get one or three, one or two hits. Um, then one, one department that I did some work on, they created a lot of their passwords according to what the service account is going to be used for. For example, SQL, SQL-30 was obviously for SQL, like this, that was their default SQL password. And South Africa is very 
religious, so a lot of people were using Bible verses. So we could literally take, um, for example, um, Revelations, and people would actually follow the, would use that as a password. And people also use, as I said, months as coping mechanisms, and they also did a lot of keyboard walking when they were doing their passwords as well, because of the default, policy, default password policy, and, and the organization setting it to only 10, in a year, so people could not reuse passwords, so people started adding, started doing weird things, use um, keyboard walking. When you looked at the password length as well, um, I found that people also still follow, like the, most of the passwords are cracked were eight characters long, um, followed by nine, ten, um, which was it's still following, which was uh, basically, I, I, I kind of knew that I was, this was about what I was going to be getting from, from a lot of the users. Um, considering that the user awareness is kind of low in South Africa. And then the last one was basically the character sets of the users. So a lot of South African users, they don't want to add special characters in, even though they're second, but most of the top passwords that people used was letters and numbers. That's it. Um, because of the user awareness training, people not telling them add a special character at least to throw, but to add a bit of mixture in. Then, so this got me thinking around, around if we converted, took the weak passwords, top English weak passwords, and you made them into an African language, what kind of things can we get? And this whole story came about when I was in Zimbabwe. I was doing a project in Zimbabwe, and I captured some password hashes in the organization, and I started to say, okay, let me start cracking them. And my default and my word list were just not working. The default word list were just not working. Until I started playing around with the people's usernames, and I started making the usernames as their passwords, and I started getting hits. Um, one example is the, the um, Chamunaro. Um, that's, his, that's his full name. He uses his first name as his password. Um, and for some strange reason, I, in all my word lists, I did not have that word to play around with. So, I, so this got me thinking, OK, like maybe there's something um, around this that I could, that I could start doing. Uh, whoops. Okay. Um, so in South Africa, so South Africa, we languages are very regional based in South Africa. Um, as you can see, so the the blue, uh, the blue is mostly that's like um, Afrikaans speaking. Afrikaans is like a, a subset of Dutch. So that's mostly sp spoken in the Cape, the Cape area. Um, the Eastern Cape is very closer based, and then the sort of like, I think that's like the yellow or so green, sorry, I'm a bit colorblind. That is Zulu, so I'm Zulu, um, so that's where most of them are spoken. And then in the middle, where Lesotho um, and the Free States, that's mostly um, Southern Sotho, and then, and then the, if you go right to the top, the, the top most part, the green part there, there's Venda. Venda, um, you'll see, is very, very interesting a bit later. But um, so South Africa is very regionally based around languages. So in South Africa, we have 11 official languages. Um, but for the purpose of the study, I only concentrate on, on eight of them. Um, so I excluded Afrikaans because Afrikaans has got a, a Dutch, it's based on Dutch. Um, even though Afrikaners in South Africa, they will say, no, we are totally African. but. Uh, I don't want to get into that sort of halfway fight with him, so I just excluded it completely. Um, so I concentrated on English, Zulu, Setswana, Sipedi, Venda, Ndebele, um, Setswana, um, Tonga, and Xhosa. So those are the, the languages. Um, and one other thing that I didn't add in here is that in South Africa, a lot of our languages are, can be grouped together. For example, um, if, you could, if you speak Zulu, you could speak to um, Setswana, Ndebele, um, Xhosa, um, and there's another, there's a, oh, sorry, and in Zimbabwe as well. You can speak um, from Zimbabwe, and basically, all if you follow the, if you follow this map, in South Africa, you, if you could, um, if you can imagine just Zimbabwe, just above this, you can speak from Zimbabwe. If you speak Zulu, you can speak from Zimbabwe all the way down to the Cape, because of how the languages are grouped up. Um, all languages are grouped up. So, example, southern, northern Sutu and southern Sutu could speak together as well, and then um, Swati could also speak to Zulu, and then Venda's just on its own. Nobody understands Venda. Yeah, even South Africans find Venda hard to speak. So basically the experiment was to collect known weak passwords and then convert them to the various African languages, 
and then, and then see how many of these pulses people could actually crack. Um, the whole test is around, it's not about me, it's about what other researchers can, can, can do with these passwords if I created a password in the African language. So basically, I took, so it's, I sele randomly selected nine pa 19 passwords from Semantic's top 500. Randomly, I just randomly chose that. Um, these are some of the words that I picked. Um, sorry, the, some of the words that I, I looked at. Um, but obviously, some of them, I can't really convert them into, into, into an African word because we don't have, for example, NASCAR. We, we don't do NASCAR, so there's no such thing for us. <laughs> so yes. <laughs> So, um, and then one very important thing was I had to, I removed the special characters from, 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 from the Chavenda language. Venda has got different special characters, um, which means that it's got its own different way of, of a keyboard. You actually have to download something that reprograms your keyboard to actually have these, some of these special characters, apparently. Um, so I had to remove these because um, I'm not testing if a person could find also the special characters in this. And um, then of that, I basically then after that I dropped all the all the words to lowercase, so so I could so I could start doing some fancy things with them later. And then, then after that I there, oh and then another very important thing about South African languages is that in English we normally capitalize the first letter, but in Zulu, for example, my language we capitalize the third letter, so. Um, we say isi Zulu, so this is the, the Zulu part is the, the capitalized, is the capitalized part. Um, and then also, but at the same time, that we also can capitalize the second letter. So we, we very much very sort of different to how English-based language is done. Um, and then, yeah, the reason for this, the reason, and the reason that I also lowercase everything is because I, don't want, I wasn't testing whether the person could, if people can crack the can figure out that the third character, for example, is the, is the one that is capitalized and not the first. Because I wanted to follow the normal, you know, how people just make a password of how they've been told in the organization. And then the special characters that I used are from the organizations that I picked um, at the beginning. I took all the special characters that, they, that, they, that the users used, and then I put them all together, and then I, said, I created a script, a partial script, sorry, a Python script to say that randomly pick, these are the special characters you could randomly pick. So all the special characters are from actual people used, the, the special characters that people used. And then what I did after that was, so I've got my passwords created, and uh, then I, uh, I, I hashed them in NTLM because I wanted to mimic an organization. And then I also did MD5. Why? I just don't know why. I just picked MD5. Um, so yeah. So these are the words that I picked. So the yellow are the English words that I, that I selected. And then, the, then these are the, all the languages that I select, that I, the eight languages. Um, and then I converted the words, converted the English word into the various languages. The various languages. You'll see that, for example, let's look at password. Um, in Zulu and uh, yeah, in Zulu and closer, the language, the, the word is exactly the same. Um, so that's why I said to you, South Africa, our languages are very much grouped together. Um, there are some languages that I that I just couldn't not find the words. For example, Chivenda. The, as much as I try to find those words, it's, ex it's, it's exceptionally hard to find them um, because where I was in South Africa, there's, there's quite a few vendor people, but the problem is that with South Africa, we speak so much English and, our, and, and some of our languages, when I speak Zulu, for example, we even start to incorporate a lot of English words into our languages. So some people just kind of like, they're like, when I ask them, like, hey, what's the word for come in? They're like, um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, so yeah, so it's kind of tough to, to get some of the words. Um, so yeah, so basically I was just like, it doesn't matter, I've got most of the words that I, that I wanted to play around with. And then um, if you look at let me in, in the closer side, so the second one, the bottom there, you'll see that it's got two words. Um, sometimes in African languages, um, for example, let me in, um, it can mean two things. It can mean um, gifage, gifage means put me in, um, pagati means come in. Um, but we use those words sort of interchangeably depending on the sentence and depending on who you're talking and how you're talking to and who you're talking to as well. So I just said, let me just add both of them in, I'll test both of them. And then what, then what else I did was that I took the months 
um, because, as you know, users like using some people's copy mechanism when creating passwords was to use the mans and convert them into into the various languages. Sorry, and sorry, and use to use the mans or January 18 as a password. So I said, okay, let me also test mans to see how effective they could be as well. Um, so basically, I used the mans that I used are the traditional words for each month. Um, it, well, sometimes we, in Zulu, for example, we say, we can say July or July, which is still very much English-based, but it's not the real, it's not the, not the real way of saying it. So basically, I said, look, okay, let me test the traditional way. So I converted each month into the, into the languages. And then this is just an example of some of the passwords that I created. Um, so so I capitalized the first letter, as you can see that the hash cache mask, capitalized the first letter, um, added a random number in, and then added in the, a special character. And for the months, for the months, I capitalized the, the, capitalized the, the month, um, and then added 18 at the end to represent this is 2018. Um, so yeah. And this is just the breakdown of the, so I created 330 of these passwords. And this is just the breakdown of all the of all the of all the words so of all the passwords that I generated. So eleven characters, so eleven characters, ten, and drop down the list um, up to just one twenty-two character force. You know, I also wanted to gauge it from easy, sort of like to ex exceptionally hard for the words. Then once that was done, I've created my hash, I've hashed my passwords, and I uploaded them to various password cracking websites. So I uploaded them to Hashcat, Hashes.org, and online Hashcrack, um, just to see, like, you know, what kind of password, or if these pe if people can can crack these passwords. What I found was that so I uploaded them on the 30th of July, and uh, or then I then I checked again on the 30th of August, so nearly a month later, and I found that only 48% of them, or 159 of these passwords, were actually cracked. Um, 100 of them were in for NTLM hashes, and 55 of them were MD5. Hashkiller cracked like about 90 of the 100 NTLM hashes, um, in the, uh, and then also most of the MD5, which was which I was pretty was pretty I was pretty happy with the results. Um, but when I looked at the started looking at the stats, I saw I found that most people actually cracked eight characters. Um, there was three only three of them had 14 characters that were actually cracked. Um, and the next slide actually puts them together. So the generated ones, so this is how I generated them. These are the ones that, were, that, were, that got cracked. Um, so you'll see that out of the 15, out of the 11 character passwords were successfully cracked, um, eight characters, which also like kind of conforms that whole thing about people actually using, um, like for example, if, I, if a password passes eight characters, I sort of stop looking at the password because it's just, I just don't have time. So it could also mean that for the same thing for the, for the user. Um, what was amazing was that people actually still had, like somebody had a 14 character passwords, 14 character of the base words. Um, one another very important thing I didn't add in here is that all the seven character passwords were actually cracked. <laughs> so yeah, so a person could have run a really nice brute force on all those passwords to, to get them at the end. Um, then, this is just a breakdown of the base words. So I wanted to find out what base words people actually found. So the ones highlighted in green are the ones that were actually compromised by the people. Um, so you'll find that, for example, Bible. Bible um, in Zulu was not cracked. Bible in Zulu and Swati, um, yeah, and Closer was not cracked at all. Um, so, and then the one in blue, um, in Closer, let me in, um, the um, Pagati was the only one that's cracked, and Gifage wasn't, wasn't cracked at all. Um, then the whites are ones that people just could not crack them, the, um, the base words, um, in the different various ways. And then the month, so the month was also sort of interesting as well. Where, um, people were able to crack um, quite a few months, but then in Vampire and Closer, they could not crack them at all. Only two of them were cracked. So if South African users used the Closer language um, as their months, as their passwords, you know, maybe they're a bit, a bit more protected. Um, so yeah, so that was sort of interesting as well. Um, so basically, put it all together was that a lot of the, the word password was successfully cracked in the two languages, so using the word password is actually not good at all. Um, the word hello was 
was was only fully cracked. Um, was actually was the only word that was fully cracked. In if you look at it, uh, hello, hello was was the only English word that was fully cracked in each of the languages. Um, maybe because it's uh, spoken quite a lot, and, uh, it's quite a lot um, in the different languages. For example, I'm Zulu, so we say Salbon. It's the first thing that we say. Um, even white people in my country understand. We say Salbon to them. They actually understand what we're saying. Um, and then Isis Zulu, Zulu language does not actually sort of offer, was the most cracked um, language. Um, the reason for Isis Zulu being the most cracked language is because it's, um, Zulu people are known to be very dominating people in South Africa. They, call us the, they actually call us the warrior nation. Um, so Zulus and Afrikaners, they, they kind of say like we, we're part of the same WhatsApp group in South African terms um, because we, we, we think we're the best. So therefore, when we speak to anybody else, um, we expect them to understand Zulu. Um, so just how it is. So if I, if you come to South Africa and you speak um, Afrikaans, um, for example, in KZN, the person will respond to you back in Zulu, and you know, then you can have this kind of standoff, you know, between the two people, which is kind of funny at times. Um, but then it mostly happens if you're a black person. So if you're a black person and I come and I speak, for example, Sutu to a Zulu person, Zulu person will respond back to me in Zulu, and they'll just expect you to understand, you know, I go on a merry way. So Zulu is spoken. Zulu is understand. It's understood in many, in many of the regions. Um, so, so it kind of also understand. Like, so it's going to be appearing most. It's going to. I've also kind of presumed that it's going to appear a lot of times on password lists as well. Um, the closer language was not was the, as I said was was the least cracked in when it came to to months. And Setswana was the language that was. Um, sorry. Oh, sorry. Setswana was the language that was cracked most in the in the in the months. If you reuse months as passwords, um, I really don't know why. I'm still have to go look as to why Setswana was was the was the most, um, considering that it's very it's very localized to to only Johannesburg. So, in conclusion, um, you know, corporate South Africa, even though they're eleven official languages, you know, we're still using English words as our passwords, which really which really think we should be moving away from that and start and start training the users to start thinking, saying like instead of using English, why don't you use your Afric your sorry, your your home language, um, just to make it a bit difficult for a person to try to crack. Um, and then, and then also, password also was, was was the most popular language spoke was the most popular password in South Africa, also very sadly. Um, but then this converts back to the user awareness training that people use. Normally, times in South Africa, I've I've been in engagements where where I'm sitting down, I'm doing a pen test, and I say to the guys, um, guys, what's the domain admin password? And somebody will shout it out for me, you know. <laughs> and it's normally company name one two three. Um, so it's still very sad that you can still get away with stuff like that. Um, <laughs> so basically, if you convert the English words into, for example, the Zulu language, it does not really offer any sort of protection, um, any additional security features for the user. So, but then it's always better. Um, so, for my on my side, I've started looking at, for example, started looking at using um, vendor. Even though I don't speak vendor, I started using vendor words as my passwords. You know, if um, and stuff like that because it just makes it a bit harder for the person, because they'll say, okay, this person is a Zulu, for example. If somebody, let's say somebody's like me, is trying to guess what kind of password you are, they say, okay, I know this person's gonna use an African language, he's Zulu, so trans gonna use a Zulu word. <laughs> Good luck. Um, so yes, so that's basically me. Thank you. <laughs>